So you might be wondering what Microsoft Office application should you use depending upon what project that you're doing. If you're doing a report or a paper or something that you need to type out a lot of information on, that's probably going to be best served in Microsoft Word. If you want to make a presentation, like that you want to show the front of the class or show one of the other classes about a topic that you've been assigned, PowerPoint's probably the right choice. If you need to make a poster or a newsletter or some other sort of handout that you're going to hand out that's graphically designed, Publisher would be the best choice. And for organizing all your class content in your classroom notebook or for putting together notes or different pieces of things together and organizing that content together, OneNote would be the best choice. All right. In this particular video, we're going to talk about some of the toolbars in Microsoft Office and how you can use the toolbars to customize different things that you're doing inside of each of the Office programs. Um, in the previous slide, we kind of gave you an outline of what each program is best used for. So as you're doing your assignments, think about what the teacher is looking for or how you want to present your learning and choose the appropriate application. Inside of Microsoft Office, right along the top, you'll see a set of toolbars. And these toolbars allow you to do different things depending upon the program that you're in. For now, we're going to focus on File, Home, Insert, and Design. The File tab opens up and allows you to create or save files, print files, or share them with other people. As you can see, I can go to Save, and I can choose places to save this particular file that I'm working on. I can choose Open, and open different files that I've been working on. Or I can go to New, and create a new document. These functions are the same throughout all of the Office programs and allow you to save, open, and create new documents. On the Home tab, typically in all of Microsoft Office, you'll find different sections. You can see each of these sections are labeled and kind of give you an idea of what those options inside of there mean. If you're confused about what something does, you can hover your mouse over one of the options and you'll see the little hint comes up that tells you what that option does. In this case, this B makes my text bold. So if I'm typing text here in the window, and I select that text by clicking my mouse and holding and dragging across to select it, if I click the B, you're going to see it'll make it bold. Pretty straightforward. You've got different options here under Paragraph, which allow you to left justify the text, center justify the text, right justify the text. Okay, and as I click each of these, you'll see those options move along the page. Those work the same in any of the Office applications. You notice also up here I have bulleted lists and numbered lists, which allow me to create a list that has bullets. So that's useful for like a set of points that you want to make about a particular topic whether it's in your writing or on a presentation. Over here under the font group, pretty straightforward. I can drop down and select any different font that I'd like to use. I can set the size that I want of that font. And like I said before with bold, I can use italics or underline or do other options that allow me to customize my font for the look that I want. Insert tabs on throughout Office bring content inside of your document or the presentation that you're working on. In this case, you'll see we can insert some page breaks or tables or pictures or charts or all different kind of options here. Okay, we can also insert hyperlinks or headers and footers. Okay, we can also insert text if we want in different formats as well as date and times and different objects. The insert tab just simply allows you to bring content into Word or any of the Office programs. So if I want to go and create a picture, okay, click pictures, you can see that showed. So let's talk about the last tab, the design tab. The design tab is different in any of the different Microsoft Office products, but what it does is it basically sets a theme for whatever you're working on. So here you can see in Word, it sets different sort of fonts or headings. I can choose colors. I can set font details across Office. I can set paragraph spacing, lots of different options in here, and you can play with those. I can do a watermark or change the color or change the page borders. So that changes the design of what this looks like. If we come over to PowerPoint, you can see under the design tab, it looks different, but here this is showing different ways to design the page. The design tab works that way. 
and allows you to change the format of whatever page that you're working on to suit your design style. So let's talk about some of the custom toolbars in Microsoft Word. As you can see on page layout, okay, this is special for Word, we have some options to set different margins and what this does is this changes the blank white space around the edge of the paper where we cannot type any text. Orientation, change the orientation of the document from portrait, which is where the wide side of the paper is up and down, to landscape, where the wide side of the paper is left and right. We can also change the size of the document that we use, but for the most part you're going to want to leave it on letter 8.5 by 11. You can set so there are more than one column of text. If you like the way that design looks, this is kind of like how you would write an article that would look like a magazine. If you drop down breaks, you can see here all the different kind of breaks that you can use. Really for most of the work you're going to be doing, the only time you're going to want to use a break is a page break. So for example, if I'm typing a title page for a document that I'm using, so let's say I'm typing a report on the Declaration of Independence. And as you can see, I'm not a very good typer. <laughs> So if I want this to be a title page where there's nothing else on the page, then I would come to page layout, go to breaks, and hit page break. And as you can see, a page break creates a new page in the Word document and makes it so that any text after here cannot be typed in, it will immediately show up on the next page. Now, under the paragraph group of the page layout tab, you can see that there's some spacing in between these lines here, right? The spacing is set right here with this after eight point. So if I want, I can select that, decrease that spacing so that my spacing is together. Or I can increase it, and if I don't like the sizes that it gives me, I can put in a number, and it will select that particular number and set the spacing to that. The default is eight, and for most assignments that you do, eight point font is perfect for the spacing. That's really the only toolbar you need, other toolbar in Word that you need to know about to have a basic understanding of how to use it. In a minute, we'll give you a mini assessment and have you go through some of these different options to create a document of your own. All right, guys. So one of the most important things you can know when you begin to type in a document in Word, especially a report or an essay that you're writing, is how to set it so that it automatically double spaces the text. To do that, we're going to come to Page Layout, and then we're going to come right here to the Paragraph group. And what you're looking for is you're looking for this little box with the arrow pointing down and to the right. And if you hover over it, it's going to say Paragraph Settings. So click that, and this pop-up window will appear. What you're looking for is right here under the Spacing heading, you're going to switch line spacing from Multiple to Double. And what this will do is this will double space your text, which is appropriate for essays or reports that you're doing. Hit OK. And then when you start a paragraph, you're always going to hit Tab to begin the paragraph. So on your keyboard, on the left side, just above Caps Lock, hit the Tab button, and you'll see the cursor will move one half inch in the page. So I'm going to begin typing. You can see there, when I went to the second line, that space automatically appeared. Okay. Now what you can do is if for some reason you have a paragraph of text that isn't double spaced, just like any other option in Word, you can select the text, then go to Page Layout, Paragraph, and you can change that setting to double, and it will automatically double space that text. So make sure when you're starting an essay, and when you do the mini assessment in a minute, you do that double spacing on your paragraph of text. All right, so this is going to be your fourth mini assessment, and this one you're going to do in Microsoft Word to practice using the different functions of the software. First, you're going to create a new Word document. Then, you're going to create a title page, and the title page should include the following. The title of the assignment that you're working on, this can be made up, your name, and the date. 
I want you to center justify all of the text. I want you to choose a font that you like, something that's very readable, and I want you to set the size at 24 point size. I want you to then insert a page break, and on the first page of the document, I want you to type five sentences about your favorite activity to do outside of school. I want you to also insert a picture of that activity. And as you work through these steps, this will give you the skills necessary to work inside of Word and allow you to practice. If you need help, go back to the previous video. I showed you how to do all of this in that video, and then you can go back and practice again. So let's talk about some of the custom toolbars that you can use in Microsoft PowerPoint. We've already gone over File, Home, Insert, and Design and talked about the custom ones in Word. So let's talk about custom ones in PowerPoint. You notice I've got a very simple three slide presentation. Okay, This is just a demo one on something you would do. Your first topic with some supporting details, your second topic with some supporting details. And I want to go ahead and set up when I present my slideshow how it will use transitions and animations as well as setting up the slideshow to present. So I'm going to go to the Transitions tab. The Transition tab sets the animation or the, or the effect that will occur in between slides. So for example, if I choose a cut one and go ahead and set that on slide two as well, okay, or we'll use a fade actually, you can see then how that faded between the two slides. Right? Simple as that. For slide three, I can say I wanted to do a push. And then you can see how that transition occurs between those slides. If you want to watch it, you can always click preview, and it'll preview that effect. The other way that you can make your presentation look nice when you're talking in front of your class is to use animations. And if we come to the animation toolbar, we can see here's a set of animations. Now they're grayed out at the moment because I haven't selected any text to animate. So let's say I'm going to take my first point. I'm going to click in on the text, and I'm going to click and hold on the left button of my mouse and select that text. You can see here I have a lot of different animations that I can choose from. The green ones animate text into the slide. The yellow ones highlight the information on the slide, and the red ones send the information off the slide. Know that you can only choose one of those three. So for the most part, you typically choose what we call a fly-in or an animation in of the text. I'm going to give you an example here of fly-in. Now you can see when I click the mouse as I'm presenting, that text will fly in. I'm going to select my second detail and give it a animation. I'm going to say appear. And then that will just simply appear. Select my third one and let's give it bounce. And now you can see it bounces into the text. The last option you need to know, or the last kind of custom toolbar in PowerPoint, is Slideshow. And in Slideshow, this is how you set up how your presentation is going to look. Okay, You can set up the Slideshow to do different things. Okay, You can play it from the beginning or from the current slide. Most of you will just play the PowerPoint from the beginning and present it to the class. However, if you're starting your PowerPoint over the next day, because the bell rang or because the day ended or the time that you were working ended, you'd want to go to the slide that you'd want to start at and then hit from current slide and that would start the slideshow. Also down here in the bottom corner this particular little button here looks like an easel that will start the slideshow from the current slide. So those are the toolbars that you really need to know more about in PowerPoint. Transitions which is the effect between slides. Animations which is the effect of the text on the slides and slideshow, which is the slideshow itself as you present to your class.